أحمد هو وصلي على رسول الكريم فقال عز وجل إن من قرية نحن محلكوها قبل يوم القيامة أو معذبوها عذابا شديدا رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وهل الأقدة من لساني يفكه قولي أمين يا رب <coughs> Dear brothers and sisters <coughs> This video that I'm about to show you uh, I hope, inshallah, you will share with many others. Make it your goal to share this video with someone in Ramadan. It's about the Great Reset. It's uh, an author who's written on this, and he's written very well. And these things, like the Great Reset, were prophecies of the Prophet wasallam that he had foretold us. So, in their desire to reset the world and reshape the world, we know the end result of all of this will be mayhem. It will not be a panacea. It won't be a cure to our ills. It will just lead to further <coughs> poverty and further uh, strife and more wars. And so uh, this man uh, wrote a book on the issue of the reset, the global reset. You will enjoy it. And... You know, when you study, for example, the fitna of Duhayma or fitna to Sarra um, and the other fitnas the Prophet ﷺ talked about before the coming of Dajjal, uh, we are sitting in the very middle of that, in the thick of that fitna. And I think the worst of it is going to be uh, this global reset agenda. Um and it will really end up crashing everything. Everything's already crashing. So in order to save everything from crashing, they're going to create a new world. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that there will be no city before the Day of Judgment except it will be destroyed because it will be a global phenomenon. When the economic system falls, which it will fall, then everything will fall. And uh, so... Uh, let this uh, man speak, and inshallah, if he says something that I feel that relates to the Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, I will at that point interject and make a few comments. Um, actually, the whole thing is based, is like a tashri, is like an explanation of many, many traditions of the Prophet وسلم. Keep in mind what he said, that you know people will become your leaders that you will not be able to trust. They will be foolish people. They will have no insight. Uh, killing and wars uh, in order to create a world that's uh, where you are enslaved, where you will own nothing. This is the literal agenda of the future. And people think it's a joke, but you can look up the laws. Like, for example, in New York State, you're not allowed to sell gas cars after 2035. You're not. It's illegal. Everyone will have to buy electric cars, and that comes with certain consequences. So, <clears throat> let us now try to understand the future. This man is basically telling us that same future that the Prophet ﷺ told us about 1,400 years ago. Please, Dr. Go. Let's go to the next slide. The World Economic Forum. All right, I'm going to keep this. Fun. The World Economic Forum is in Davos, Switzerland. They had annual meetings. Started in 1971. This is boilerplate stuff. Okay, next. This is the book that Klaus Schwab, its founder, uh, wrote in two, June of 2020 called The Great Reset. Now, people say, oh, it's a dark conspiracy theory. I was just called a conspiracy theorist by the Soros-funded Media Matters for America. How is something a conspiracy theory when the founder of the group had a book called The Great Reset? They've done slick videos on it. They're, and I'm gonna, I use all of their quotes. I use all the mainstream media quotes on this. Next. This is what they said in June 2020. The whole world is reeling with COVID lockdowns. And this is what Klaus Schwab, the head of the World Economic Forum, closely tied with the United Nations Sustainable Agenda 21 World Health Organization. It represents a narrow uh, window of opportunity to reflect, reimagine, and reset our world. So what does that even mean? Next. Every country from the U.S. to China must participate. There's no option there. Remember, it's like a mandatory lock. Every industry must be transformed. Notice he said oil, gas, and tech. We need a great reset of capitalism. Next. And that's some of the globalists. You'll see Greta Thunberg is one of their favorites. Even Vladimir Putin, if you go back to the early days, back in the 90s, he went through their program. I'll get to that a little bit. You see Al Gore, John Kerry, Prince Charles, all the heads of Fortune 500, academia, the media, celebrities, the royal family. Next. And the slogan is, these were videos that they actually produced, slick videos, and they ended up pulling these videos because they got so much, they, they said the quiet part out loud, which I guess they weren't supposed to do. You can see the logo, World Economic Forum. You'll own nothing and you'll be happy. <laughs> Whatever you want, you'll rent and it'll be delivered by drone. Notice, you'll own nothing, you'll be renting it, delivered by drone. Next. The U.S. won't be the world's leading superpower. They're very clear. Next. 
There will be a global price on carbon. It will make fossil fuels history. Not fossil fuels more expensive or more regulated. History. Next. A billion people will be displaced by climate change. That's the fear. We have to do this because we're saving the planet. Next. And meat will be, this is for meat. Meat will be an occasional treat, not a stable for the good of the environment and our health. Of course, it won't be occasional for the people flying into Davos and private jets, but for the masses. We are the unwashed masses in this scenario. Their goal is to make meat. I'll have the whole thing on the food reset later. Polluters will have to pay a price to emit carbon dioxide. So the, the key is they're focusing, they're pivoting from COVID to climate. They're so excited about what's happening with this. Next. The Great Reset. The world must act jointly and swiftly to revamp all aspects of our society, economies, from education, social contract, and working conditions. These are global industrialists of, the, of the, the ruling elite telling us that we're going to revamp everything and that we must do it. And they have a plan to make it happen. Next. Just so that everybody's clear, um, the Great Reset is a branch of the United Nations. It's their future program. Um, this idea of uh, talking about the environment is being used. The carbon uh, footprints are being used because then they come up with all this criteria. You can't do business unless you're doing this, unless you're doing this, unless you're doing this. And no one can then open up a business except for the rich, right? And so <clears throat> we'll come to that, uh, inshallah, okay? So, but what will Muslims do when they're not allowed to eat meat? Because that's the plan. When Muslims are not allowed to eat meat, and Muslims are told, as you will see, that you have to eat insects. You have to eat insects for food. What are you going to do? Do you have a plan? What are you going to do when the system collapses? What do you do when the system tells you that you have to change your lifestyle? They won't say to you, necessarily, that you have to leave Islam, but they'll tell you to do everything against Islam. They'll create a lifestyle that will put pitch you against the Islamic lifestyle. One of the key parts of that is to tell you not to eat meat, but to eat insects for protein. What are you going to do? If you, if you think this is hogwash, you need to do, like, research. There is no construction without destruction. That's a famous word from Chairman Mao of uh, China, now deceased. But the idea here is, in order to reset, build back better, you have to essentially collapse the current system. Uh, Vladimir Lenin, I believe this was from 1917, during this campaign, when he was back in Russia, trying to fight, fighting Tsarist Russia, trying to implement the Bolshevik Revolution, he used the phrase, worse is better, the worse the better, in order to describe how he was going to achieve his revolutionary ends. And the idea here is, collapse the current system, create chaos, make it as miserable as possible, because then you can sweep in with your solutions and your vision. So the Great Reset is here. This is sort of my outline when I talk about it. We're seeing a new normal being imposed. The First Amendment, free speech rights, and our currency are being collapsed by government and corporate collusion. We're seeing it right now. I'll get into what central digital currency. I'm going to get into uh, how, there, how there literally any free speech uh, censorship, big tech censorship, is government censorship. Current energy system is being intentionally collapsed. Our transportation system is being intentionally collapsed. Your freedom of movement being chipped away. Uh, our ability to own property, uh, home, auto, is being intentionally collapsed. Our high-yield agriculture is being intentionally collapsed as they're going after high-yield uh, fertilizer. They're going after nitrogen in the Netherlands, in Sri Lanka, in Europe, in Canada, in Australia, coming to the U.S. Our ability to choose to eat meat is being banned to create demand for insects in this lab-grown fake meat. Now, there's two kinds of fake meat. There is the vegetable oil process, like Beyond Burger. You can go to Burger, McDonald's, Burger King and get. And then there's kind of what Bill Gates is pushing. It's called synthetic meat. And this is done, and it's apparently it's real meat. They get the stem cells from a real live animal. They culture it in a lab, and it grows. But it's not really an animal. It's like a mutant blob that grows, and there's even bone structure. And then they harvest the meat from that. So you don't need the animal. You just need their stem cells. This is what they're going to be pushing as well. So I just thought I'd throw that in. So that's what's coming. Okay. So the pandemic. This is Justin Trudeau. World leaders jump like just onto this immediately. Pandemic has provided an opportunity for a reset. This is our chance to accelerate. We'll address global challenges, inequity, climate change. They're all excited. This is that's Justin Trudeau right in right after they announced the great. Reset in 2020. Al Gore, I think this is time for a re re reset. Among them is the climate crisis that they're going to be using to challenge it. That's on June 19th, NBC's Today Show. The World Economic Forum, this is John Kerry, going to have to play front and center role to deal with climate change, all of which is being laid bare as a consequence of, of COVID-19. Now, in the book, I detail, first of all, emergency powers. I go back to the Roman Republic and show through the Roman Republic, through the Middle Ages, through Germany in 1933, through 9-11 with the Patriot Act, to the COVID emergency, to the coming climate emergency. The greatest abuses of human rights by governments has been during times of so-called emergencies, where they have temporary emergency powers. And this, go back, sorry, this is 1930, go back one slide. This is 1932, Stuart Chase, he's a kitchen cabinet advisor to, uh, economic advisor to Franklin Delano Roosevelt. He originally came up with what sounds eerily like the Great Reset. And let's just take a look at 1930, this is 1932 book, and he wrote one in 1940 as well, the New Deal. Control of banking, executive arm growing at the expense of the legislative, control of energy sources, control of transportation, control of agriculture production, the state control of communication and propaganda. All of this in the 1930s and 40s. So this began in Woodrow Wilson, the idea of the administrative state, you'll be ruled by experts who know what's best for you. Sound familiar? Listen to the experts 
Thank you, Dr. Fauci. But the last line here, Chase asked in his 1932 book, why should the Soviets have all the fun remaking the world? And this is the shocking line, because at the time, New York Times winning Pulitzer Prizes for their work on sending correspondence over to uh, Russia, praising Joseph Stalin as a visionary world leader. This is what they were caught up in that 1932. Why should the Soviets have all the fun? Now, next. Now I've updated it to why should China have all the fun remaking the world? Here's what's happening. In, in, in essence, the reason this is all happening and the reason this isn't a theory and something like this, this isn't 1990 where we're talking about the New World Order. This is 2022. We are copied China to a T. If you remember back in the 90s with all the trade agreements that ended up hurting our industrial base and moving our jobs over to China, we were told if we can get China economically fired up, they'll be more like us. They'll embrace freedom and capitalism and democracy, just like the collapse of the Soviet Union. Remember the peace dividend? Turned out the opposite happened. China gutted our industrial base, and then we are becoming more like China. Copy COVID response. This is the World Health Organization in, in uh, 2020 on how to handle lockdowns. Next. This is Neil Ferguson. And if you see that quote, if China had not done it, meaning lockdown, the year would have been very different. They actually, Anthony Fauci marveled at what China did. World Health Organization marveled. All the public health authorities loved it because it was absolute control, nailing people in their homes. Neil Ferguson was the one who came out with the research that more than 5 million Americans can die. If you remember, there was all these, res this was one of the main ones. Uh, he was like, oh, so many people are going to die. And now they're saying because of China, we were safe. OK, that we if, if we were if we were we if we had to be tough and had to be intrusive in people's personal lives the way China was so that we could save people. OK, so <clears throat> Neil Ferguson was one of those people that came on TV and said millions of people can die. And, and if you remember when COVID started, they showed all those pictures from China, people falling in the streets like flies and dying. Uh, and then uh, let's continue never done in the previous pandemic never had they never recommended it they never had anything like it and it was frightening to see next the once free west has lusted after this chinese party rule next uh, this is Tom Friedman. Uh, one party autocracy is currently has its drawbacks and, and he goes on and, he's, and he talks literally about the party can just impose the politically difficult but critically important policies needed to move a society forward. He is praising one party authoritarian rule in China on the pages of the New York Times. Uh, Thomas Friedman, the person he was just quoting, who is praising China for their power and they're able to implement and be intrusive on people's lives. He is the pop star of political science in America. OK, he is the professor Okay, who is uh, most sought off, so sought professor regarding political issues. Okay, he's also quote unquote a expert in Islam. Next. UN climate chief lamented U.S. democracy. It's very detrimental to global warming. She lauded one party rule China for doing it right on climate. So they lusted after what China did. COVID literally gave them the opportunity. Next. So this one world government, you know, this one world, which will then, you know, that that one world government, that dream, will be overtaken uh, at some point by Dajjal and his forces. Uh, so this is what this is all going towards, okay? And that's why when Allah says, Immin nahnu muhlikuha, there will be no city except we'll destroy it oh, before the Day of Judgment, meaning it will be a global collapse. Now, to get further clarification on that, you have to go to the hadith literature and that's what the prophet said the prophet mentioned city by city these cities these cities these cities and the prophet said and you can look this up the last of the cities of muslims to fall the last the last of the muslim cities to fall will be medina Justin Trudeau, there's a level of admiration I have for China because their basic dictatorship is allowing them to actually turn their economy around on a dime. This is the once free Western leaders literally praising China. So just laying this groundwork here next. The permanent state affair. So in the book, I quote German economic president, the lockdown have brought a foretaste of what is to come. A permanent state affair, strict behavioral control, massive loss of jobs, growing dependence on the state. So when you're looking at the Green New Deal and you think, oh my gosh, why do they like this? It's causing energy shortages. It's causing chaos. We can't drive cars. Can't drive. That's not an unintended design. That's the intended consequences. The same thing with lockdowns. Remember, the worse, the better. Vladimir Lenin's slogan in Tsarist Russia. Next. The real Cuban, less than 12 months, they closed businesses, forced us to wear muzzles, kept us from our families, killed off sports, burned down cities, forcibly seized power, shut down our speech, and they accused us of the coup. Next. So the lockdowns. I have a whole chapter in the book using all the science on the lockdowns, and they are the most ineffective things you could ever imagine. Sweden led the way. Countries like Belarus led the way. Brazil, to a lesser extent, in the U.S. We had South Dakota, Georgia, Florida leading the way. Most important governor by far was Ron DeSantis, and I write that in the book. You know, George's governor did a good job too, but I couldn't even recognize George's governor if I saw a picture of him. But you know Ron DeSantis because Ron DeSantis invited in top epidemiologists. He invited in all the public health who was opposed to this from people like Scott Atlas. 
Nobel Prize winning uh, public health officials, and he challenged it head on. He went against the public health consensus. He went against the media, and he did it with press conferences. He did it with, with press briefings. He showed all the other weak Republican governors how it's done. Without a Ron DeSantis in Florida, we would have had much, much longer lockdowns, particularly in the red states. The next. The science loss. And this, I love this quote. This is uh, John Iannone. I hope I say his name. And I know this expressing his opposition. There was a clash between two schools of thought, authoritarian public health versus science, and science lost. China won, and the Great Reset won. That's what's so important about it. So next. Klaus Schwab, I did have a video on this. Uh, have, he's on video saying this. We penetrate the cabinets. Uh, he's like a James Bond villain. He's kind of like uh, Blofeld, if you ever watched the old Sean Connery. He literally is. I mean, it's almost like he's a, it's a comic book character, but he plays the role very well. He's very proud of it. We penetrate the cabinets. He talks about the, the president, of, uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, Argentina. Half of Trudeau's cabinet, or even more, are actually young global leaders. And if you think about the Netherlands, their Prime Minister, Ruud, who's presiding over the collapse of their agriculture, trying to close almost 12,000 mom-and-pop family-run farms, he's a protege of the World Economic Forum. Next. Uh, that's the video. Next. So this is some of the world leaders. We're very proud of how we penetrate the cabinet. And this is just a little sampling of some of the world leaders around the globe. And the next one is all the – this is Justin Trudeau's uh, Canadian cabinet and members of the Liberal Party, actually, in, in uh, Canada. They really do penetrate the cabinets. And it's not just that they're going after. They're going after kids, too. They've actually got themselves next. They've actually infiltrated themselves in, in uh, Sesame Street. They did a whole podcast, a whole article on this, interview – Singing for Kids, The Great Reset podcast. I read about this in the book. They're going after kids. They want kids to know this phrase, The Great Reset, because it means woke ideology. It's pro-everything that you can find in any college campus, all the all the wokeism. That's what they want kids. And they, so they actually go after the kids on this. It's really incredible. They know what they're doing. It's tried and true methods. Next. Uh, that's you. That's the science. And that's politics. This is what we've had gone through. This was a psychological operation, what happened with COVID. Next. So the L.A. mayor, this is what I love. Uh, you guys remember this. When he met Magic Johnson, Mayor Garcetti, he took off his mask. when he, he didn't have a mask, but he held his breath when he met Magic Johnson. And he literally defended this. This was in the mainstream media. He actually, go back. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, this is actually all of these. I was watching a Leave it uh, to Beaver, and he had, uh, this is, he had chicken pox. This is like uh, season three of Leave it to Beaver. And his brother Wally wanted to go up and see him. And they go, no, you can't go. This is before the vaccine. And he said, you can't go up there because we don't want you getting it too. And he's like, it's okay. I'll just go in the room and I'll hold my breath. And everyone laughed. They had the laugh track come on. But Mayor Garcetti apparently thinks that's the science. He held his breath to do it. That's some of the absurd things. Go ahead, next. The same narrative for the past decade. The whole point of lockdowns was to stop, the slow the spread. We now know from Deborah Burks' book that they lied to Donald Trump about the 15 days to slow the spread. Literally, she admitted it in explicit language. This just came out about two months ago that they knew that was, they, were, they weren't telling the truth, but they wanted to buy time, and they duped Donald Trump into this. But if you look back, and I go back to 2012 here, these are all the arguments back during the flu season about how hospitals were overrun. I mean, this was the idea of these emergency rooms, they, they have very tight capacity to begin with, but all they did was tweak the flu narrative to make it a catastrophic one for the COVID narrative to justify that two weeks, all based on scary predictions that in most, you know, most places never happened. Happened. Obviously, it did in some places. They may have been overrun, but as a thing overall, that was a justification. It turned out not to be true. We had a long history of the same rhetoric. Next. The biggest, they have a whole chapter on the wealth transfer of the Great Reset. We lost $3.7 trillion in earnings during the pandemic. Billionaires got richer by 3.9. So you see that there's a, you know, there's, uh, two, there's a 3.7 to 3.9. The billionaires did very well. Next. In fact, one was created every 30 seconds. Your own governor bragged about how the state of California was doing great because they had more billionaires. 30 hours. One was created, a billionaire, every 30 hours. In any place in the country, and that all the billionaires he knew were doing great, other private jet business. So he couldn't imagine why anyone was complaining about lockdowns. It was a boot, it was a huge boon to his friends. Next. That's an idea of the coronavirus deaths. And then you look at underneath it. You guys know this. I think you had Robert Malone here last month. Uh, and that, this is such an important part, though, because the lockdowns were part psychological operation, part social conditioning to get us to accept limitations for future and or get to what's coming. Next. I call it the, this is a uh, medical authoritarianism. Next. Lab coats around the world. Soft-spoken epidemiologists, white lab coats, playing with numbers. They, they literally decided to cause panic during COVID-19. Plunged into the grandest experiments of authoritarian paternalism. Uh, those without government jobs are deemed incompetent to judge whether it's safe to take a dip in the ocean or walk in the woods. They, this was unprecedented. Almost every previous pandemic, people were given you know, guidelines. Never were you given arrested. Never were you thrown out. You have people surfing in the ocean and taken out and, and, uh, and, and, and literally detained. And Australia was much worse. French President Macron, we must all limit the number of people we're in contact with because scientists say so. Now, who are these scientists? Well, Dwight David Eisenhower warned us about this during his, uh, his farewell address in 1961. He warned that public policy could become the captive of a scientific technological elite. This is what we're living through right now. The idea is experts making decisions. You, wanna, you don't want to mask your kid for eight hours a day in kindergarten? Do you have a degree in epidemiology? Do you have 30 years public health? Who are you to tell us the experts have said it's necessary? Necessary. Next. There, he talks about how we must be alert to the, the danger that public policy becomes a captive of the scientific technological elite. So the idea is that government grants equals what you're going to study. And if you study something contrary to what the politics want, you're not going to have a career. And I saw all this in the climate debate long before the COVID debate. Good. Next. The problem with science is affecting just another branch of government. I interviewed economist uh, Sanji Sabloff. He was an uh, Australian economist who resigned over the lockdowns. And I call this science and supportive policy. Next. 
Thomas Sowell, this is the greatest quote. If you remember, experts are called in not to provide factual information or dispassionate analysis, but to give political cover for decisions already made based on other conditions entirely. Now, we had Michael, uh, Michael Levitt, Nobel Prize winning Stanford epidemiologist, uninvited from scientific conferences, not for a scientific reason, but because he didn't support the lockdowns as a solution. We had these other scientists canceled, thrown off of YouTube, silenced. Uh, it just literally destroyed, tried to destroy careers. So the same thing happened in, in the climate world, but it's because they went against the government funding narrative and the government po political narrative. And that's actual photograph of banned students practicing. I'm sure you've seen that. They're in their little bubble. Stay in your bubble. Good. South Australian authorities use any force necessary. Now, Australia had one of the most authoritarian responses next to China and next to New Zealand and Canada. But I think Australia won it because they had the quarantine camps, track and trace apps. If you, got, if you were near anyone that had COVID, you had to be put in a camp against your will. And of course, if you tried to organize a protest, police would come to your house. Even if you posted something on social media, they'd come to your house. Next. Uh, Dr. Jay Bhattacharya, this is what's happening right now in California. I'm sure you guys are aware of this, the medical misinformation crusade. He said if you put docs who deviate from the scientific group think you get fined. This is going to be ruining careers. Uh, warning to doctors spreading COVID misinformation. Now, misinformation is disagreeing with Anthony Fauci. That's happening now. This is going to be voted on in California. Has it been voted on yet? I mean, I just saw some. And is it now law? Okay. Is that, is that today this happened? But it's okay. And when's he going to sign it? Is that going to be, it could be, is there a reason why he might not or no? Okay. <laughs> See, I hope that this is scary. The same thing's happening next. Same thing's happening in Australia. They're being warned to follow public health messages, and they're warned against authoring papers that contradict public health messaging. Now, if you're a medical researcher and you come up with data that's contrary, they're not welcoming it because it's against the narrative. They actually believe that it's more important to keep a consistent message to the public and not allow any data contrary. Exact same thing happened for decades in the climate debate. That's why they got rid of the medieval warning period. Well, right now they're trying to get rid of the 1930s record heat waves. They have to get rid of it because it ruins the narrative. This is chilling because this is affecting everything. Your doctor's recommendations to you, their medical research, all the peer-reviewed journals. They know where the money is. They know what they're allowed to say and what they're not. So it's the crushing of science. Next. So who does Bill Gates like? I just showed you what Australia's done. Bill Gates, who's the second largest funder of the World Health Organization behind the United States government, the Gates Foundation. If every country does what Australia did, we could prevent the next pandemic. So all we have to do is have helicopters and militarized police taking people from the beach, putting them in forced quarantine, shutting them down, not allowing to set. This is Bill Gates' vision of a utopian COVID response is what Australia did. Next. And of course, this is that Bill Gates has spent up to $300 million buying media. I have a lot of fun in the book showing how he interviewed by Judy Woodruff of PBS on ABC News. Openly, he pays them for his coverage. Have you ever seen a hostile interview with Bill Gates? Uh, there isn't one. You can't find it because he would never allow it. These are, every time he sits down, it's an infomercial for reporters that he's bought and paid for. And I detail where all the money goes in the book. Next. The new normal. Next. So welcome to 2030. This is World Economic Forum again to contribute. I own nothing, have no privacy, and life has never been better. Next. CDC, this is the Vice magazine, tracked millions of phones. See so one of the fitnas the Prophet ﷺ talks about is called fitna to sarwa, <coughs> which is the fitna of spying and having absolutely no secrets or no private life, right? They'll know everything about you. And this is being used against politicians. This is being used against whoever, for whatever agendas that they want. Um, and so tracking people, uh, and so uh, this is where things are going. Things People are being blackmailed into this, being forced into this because of their private life being possibly being the blackmail of being exposed. So this is something that's very, very obvious. Um, if you look at, for example, what's happened recently in Pakistan, the politicians, the lawyers whose uh, private... Uh, moments, private uh, texts, private conversations just get leaked every once in a while. There's this, uh, I think, uh, system called the Pegasus that Saudi Arabia owns, right? In which uh, they can spy on whoever they want, whichever phone number that they want. They can get all the information that they want. If Americans followed COVID lockdown orders. Now, these are documents they had to force out of the CDC. They had no authority to do it. So the point I'm trying to make is this type of forced uh, forcing this change, following China, following authoritarian governments, this is becoming a global uh, thing. And uh, th there are many things that come with this. You'll, uh, but let's see what he says. This is how it begins. The track and trace. They use the fear of COVID. Keep in mind, for decades, they tried to scare us on climate. It just couldn't work. They gave up on adults. That's why they recruited all the kids. And that's why the whole sunshine movement, all these kids have been. This is what we did. I don't know if you remember or if you even noticed, but the idea of track and uh, trace was put on every single person's phone. Uh, especially if you were unaware of it, you probably didn't untick that to not be part of your phone. Dealing with. So they tracked us down. Keep going. 
And now they have all these track and trace apps. A lot of these are people that come from Al Gore's universe. They've done climate work. They're getting involved in the COVID issue. Users have their blood screen and the proved COVID pass laboratory. This is according to the World Economic Forum. Next. Well, monitoring access to concerts, conferences, pilgrimage. This is happening much further along in Canada. But of course, they tried it in every state. I think you guys, does any cities in California still have the vax passports or demands or has it all been lifted? Everyone's free, yeah, lifted. Okay, next. Anti-vaxxer. You may be an anti-vaxxer now, according to the dictionary. The updated definition is anyone who opposes vaccine mandates. You're now an anti-vaxxer. It used to be people who didn't, who didn't trust vaccines at all and didn't want them. But now, if you don't support a government authoritarian mandate, hey, you're an anti-vaxxer. That's the latest dictionary. Merriam-Webster. Next. Um, this is Canadian Prime Minister. At the end, he's ranting about unvaccinated people. And he says, as a country to make a choice, do we tolerate these people? He's asking openly, how do we tolerate these vermin? Next. Bill Maher, on his show, Big Lip, loves no, Justin Trudeau. I mean, Justin Trudeau, I thought he was a cool guy. Then I started to read what he said. It's like, tolerate the unvaccinated? Now you do sound like Hitler. This is Bill Maher on his HBO show. So this is this is a positive moment. I have a whole chapter devoted to all the politically left progressives and liberals coming over because of COVID, being red-pilled. Everyone from Naomi Wolf, former Clinton Gore advisor, to Russell Brand, the Hollywood socialist actor, who's now just one of the most eloquent speakers on The Great Reset. Jimmy Dore, who was um, uh, the Young Turks, who's fantastic going off about the, the, the uh, uh, Great Reset. Uh, Glenn Greenwald. Uh, and a whole host of other people. I, that's one of my favorite chapters in the book because all of these liberals are now joining with conservatives. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Uh, has come incredibly, and we're building alliances now because it's no longer left-right. It's freedom versus tyranny. Next. So we must start planning for a permanent pandemic. Remember I told you about the emergency powers going back to the Roman Republic. They don't want to get it. We're still under a COVID emergency. Joe Biden keeps extending the COVID emergency indefinitely. He keeps pushing it. I think we're in the next March right now. And of course, governors and states can do the same thing. And I'll get to it. But he's now, according to the Associated Press, setting a climate declaration of emergency, which is going to give 130 new powers. We'll get to that in a little bit. Next. Scottish government trying to make emergency powers permit. This is all over the world. It's politicians drunk on power. So the Great Reset, in part, is as old as power politics itself. They don't want to give up this power. This is an interesting point. Previous totalitarian regimes had uh, barbed wire fences, secret police. Now they don't need those anymore in order to propose tyranny. New technologies. There's an MMA fighter who came awry of cancel culture, had his website canceled, social media apps, his Gmail taken away. They can just, deep, I guess the word is unperson you, at a moment's notice and make you have no influence. This is what they've done and this is what they are doing. This is, And I'll get to it in a minute, but this whole have with the freedom of information coming out the biden administration sending a list of names get rid of these people on social media yes they're all gone who's next get rid of this website on it this is now we're watching the naked collusion between government and big tech and you still have many libertarians conservatives inside the beltway these are private companies they can do whatever they want do the way. Uh, mind-blowing we still have to get people on uh, that believe in liberty on our side on this next to learn who rules over you simply find out who you are not allowed to criticize hmm, let's see justin trudeau uh, anthony fauci right, go ahead. klaus Schwab, we must build an entirely new foundation for our economic social system a great reset ensures shared goals such as equality and sustainability so it's all their definition, and you have no say in how you like to find that. Next. Slovenia. Drivers must prevent COVID certificate in order to refuel their cars. Next. Chase Bank got to cancel the credit cards of Trump National Security Advisor uh, Sean Flynn because they didn't like his politics. Now, there was a huge outcry. They ended up giving it back. But this is now the corporate government. They don't want to run a riot of cancel culture. So these corporations run scared. Next. Bank of England. This is creepy as hell. The Bank of England tells their ministers that they're intervening on digital currency programming. Now, it actually says in this that the government will determine you know, how much money you can spend and what you can spend it on, and they have to, the government has to deem what you're buying sensible. So if you want to buy a gun, if you want to buy tobacco, alcohol, maybe potato chips, whatever it is, it may not be sensible that day, that month, that hour, depending on who's in power. Someone else in the book, and I announced this, likened it to food stamps. So you get food stamps, and you can only use them in certain conditions for certain foods at certain places. That's how they want to make our money. Think about that. That's the ultimate, one of the ultimate human controls. Next. So this is not very far from happening. It really isn't. We saw this happen with with Canadian uh, the Freedom Convoy in in, uh, in Canada. They were blocked from their access to their own money. People who made them donuts and coffee literally had their money cut off. And they even went further. The chief of police uh, in Ottawa was talking about going after family members, spouses, uh, and that this has happened in other societies, but none that we would call free societies. Next. Card decline. I love this. You delete your hate speech before your card works. Don't laugh. This is reality. This is like this is actually happening. You know, with rapid uh, ease, and especially with this digital currency. Earlier this year, I think it was March or April, Joe Biden had an executive order on a central bank digital currency establishment in the United States, which again, programmable money, World Economic Forum is extremely behind this. It is a great way to control the public through how they can use money, and it's in, you don't need gulags in order to impose tyranny. Next. So this is a hybrid. Uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, who I think is fantastic. Uh, it is not big government. It's a hybrid. We spent 40 years defending it from the front door of, capital, of the country, uh, defending capitalism, but didn't realize we were inv invaded to the back door through fascism and through basically the Chinese social credit system. This is where we are right now in a, as, a, as a world and a country. Next. So the Chinese credit system is basically a credit system that measures how normal you are in terms of their agenda of shared values. Okay. So what that means is if you go to the mosque every day and don't go to the bar, uh, if you go to the masjid every day and you don't uh, party, if you go to the masjid every day and, uh, you know, uh, and you don't really 
do those things that they would consider normal, uh, then you're going to be in trouble. They're going to block your credit card. They're going to say you, you have uh, this digital currency, but you can't use it to buy uh, your first, uh, your rights, like buying a gun. Um, you can't, basically, uh, they, they will control the agenda because you hold these political views. Uh, we're not going to give you any more money. <clears throat> Mail not protect. ESG, environmental social governance. Uh, I won't spend a lot of time on this, but this is essentially going to be the end of capitalism. This is more devastating to the energy industry than any executive order, than anything the Biden administration has passed or done, because this gets the banks to look at the at any energy extraction thing as a danger to the planet, which means higher interest rates, less money, less investor interest. So this this uh, social credit system, and who's behind this? One of the groups behind this is the BlackRock. And BlackRock owns everything, literally owns the world. It has a share in every single major company. Um, and so they're, they're the people behind this. Environmental social governance is incredible because it's applied only to Western nations. China, you'll have every company in the world do business for them, from the NBA to Disney. No ESG is funded, no human rights records considered, no environmental record. They're building a coal plant a week. China's exempt. Everyone else isn't next. Environmental social governance is a big part of the Biden administration. They're banking, securities, and exchange disclosures on climate. These companies stated commitment. You might think China is an environmental social government paradise. This is uh, according to Common Sense Society. But China, again, is exempt. Next. Next. So flicking the kill switch to government, uh, skipping the kill switch, governments embrace internet shutdowns as a form of control. This is the UK Guardian. In the book, I detail 2010, 2017, 2019, these dry runs of a COVID pandemic, of a viral pandemic. And in one of them, and these are funded by Rockefeller World Economic Forum, Johns Hopkins University. They openly talk about shutting down the internet in all the countries in order to stop misinformation. They now, what's uh, very interesting here is that you know how during COVID, there were people speaking against COVID and they had a certain reaction. But that was also, from a bigger, bigger perspective, a test, right? To see what they can get away with at the global level, to see how much control, what type of reaction comes back, uh, what type of people, what are their personalities who would go against this agenda. So they made this whole COVID situation a litmus test to be able to study our behaviors and to be able to study our reactions so that then they can further their agenda and make it difficult even more than it was before on people who understand where the tyranny that the world is being thrown into. They were poised and ready to, to use COVID as a reset of the way we communicate. And it's been unbelievable since March of 2020 how much we've lost free speech in our country. And it just keeps coming. This internet is flicking the kill switch. Frightening, because it's about control. Next. This is the news from this past week or two weeks ago. Documents revealed collusion between CDC and Big Tech during the pandemic. I mean, you can read. This didn't make my book because it's just happened. But these emails, it's just unbelievable. Literally, high level talking directly to the Biden administration. And they're just like, we're on it. We're taking these names off. Who what else do you want? How else can we help you? FBI meeting with uh, Facebook, whether it's political campaigns. It's incredible. This is complete a violation of First Amendment. There's no way around it. And the real problem here isn't the people pushing it. It's things like the Cato Institute in Washington and other groups who just think these are private companies. We can't get involved. And I'm telling you, coming from the Washington area, that's what you hear over and over of people who speak sensibly on every other issue. But when it comes to this, they have like a blind spot. Right? And I believe now we have to be like Teddy Roosevelt. I think it's time to break up the big tech monopolies. I sound like Bernie Sanders, but I think there's no other way around it at this point. <laughs> yes, trust buster. Uh, and the ideas are all this is just different things. This is exactly what's happening. I'll own your farmlands. I'll shut down your media. I'll shut down your bank account. I'll shut down your social life. This is literally not even a, a meme. I and mean, this is reality. Next. This is a great quote because this is what America used to be. John F. Kennedy. We're not afraid to trust the people with unpleasant facts, foreign ideas, alien philosophies. For a nation that's afraid to let its people judge the truth and falsehood in open market is a nation afraid of its people. And we are, our government is terrified of us right now. There's no other way around it. He would be in my chapter on the, on the other left. The fourth industrial revolution will affect your very essence of human experience. This is scary stuff too. Next. The first industrial revolution, revolution water, steam. Second, electric power. Third, electronic technology. The fourth is a digital characterized by a fusion of technologies that blurring the lines between physical, digital, and biological spheres. Next. Klaus Schwab asked Google co-founder Sergio Brin, 2017, you can watch the video. Ten years, we're sitting here, we have implants in our brains. We can immediately feel because you have the implants. You can measure with all your brain waves and see how the people react. You think that's imaginable? And of course, Brin had nothing but nice things to say. Oh, sure, it's imaginable. This is normal stuff. They had the head of the major uh, pharmaceutical on this past meeting in Davos talking about pills they developed that'll have tracking devices to ensure people's compliance of taking medicine. Again, these are at the Davos conferences in full video, fully released, nothing. They're, they're going for a biomedical secu uh, security state. This is what they're trying to impose. And it's building on previous ones. Again, the Patriot Act created a surveillance state against us, and it's, it's been renewed. No Republican opposition. It's not going anywhere. Government can now openly spy on our citizens. Every crisis that we've had <coughs> has advanced this. And COVID 
brought it all together with a bow tie for big government and for central planners. Next. COVID climate reset connection. Okay. MIT scientist Richard Lindzen. Uh, it's hard to imagine. A, this is 2009. He's talking about carbon dioxide. Hard to imagine a better leverage point of carbon dioxide that it consume control over a society. It's essential to breathing. If you demonize it, you gain... So part of the carbon dioxide footprints, right? That's part of breathing. You need carbon dioxide, right? So what is better to control people than their own breath? So this whole biotechnology the thrust towards it, the whole digital currency. This is to create an artificial world where the rich get richer and you're, ta you're fed insects uh, to survive. You're given a, uh, a basic income. And uh, anyway, let's listen to what this person says control of everything so there's a fundamental attractiveness to bureaucratic mentality so 2009 they, you can't imagine hard to imagine a better leverage point than going after human breath we inhale oxygen exhale carbon dioxide well they imagined it next next COVID was a flu d'etat climate scared no one COVID scared everyone initially across party lines across ideologies across ages the takeover of democratic political process by overnight the green new deal was essentially imposed upon us end to air travel personal automobile travel down to a trickle free health care for all status quo ability of people to stay at home without working receive a paycheck this was the greatest advance you didn't need notice the green new deal was introduced but they never even scheduled it for a hearing or a vote green new deal never passed congress even though they could have they never wanted to they didn't need to next compliant public speaker of the house of commons this is a chilling quote he was amazed at how compliant the public was in accepting the covid lockdowns no one could imagine we were wearing masks so readily we'd be so compliant he now wants to pivot over to climate change next of course, in 2018, two years before COVID, climate change was declared the greatest health challenge of the 21st century. It threatens all aspects. So how are they going to do this? They've already got COVID. They replaced climate, right? No. Next. New York Times. Now think about this in terms of lockdowns. Lowering crime causes global warming. <laughs> and it's like, like, what? That's actual headline, actual New York Times. Let's go to the next one. This is how they explain it. Prison inmates consume less than the average citizen. So fewer prisoners means higher overall energy consumption. In other words, they want people locked down. They want people in lockup because then you lose, you have a lower carbon footprint. New York Times, 2016 saying this. Next. So it's government control of inmates. Remember, even in prisons, they have lockdowns. Next. So what happened? Climate lockdowns. And this is their phrase, not mine. I'll get to that next. We're flattening the coronavirus curve. We can flatten the climate curve, too. This is the Washington Post. Next. The EU proposes mandatory target just last week. So after Corona, the next big thing, one of the next big things is going to be the environment, right? And what part of this could be with using HARP, if anybody knows about HARP, uh, using the HARP technology to show by force uh, that, uh, you know, the environment's going crazy, we need to do something, right? More earthquakes, more tornadoes. And we're seeing this. And what's very interesting is before, uh, you know, when we used to be young, uh, when we were young in the 1980s, 1990s, um, you know, weather was local, right? Now it's like the same weather across the entire country. Uh, it's very weird what's happening. And uh, <clears throat> we certainly have the technology to do these things. And if you have enough money, you can definitely do these things. So mandatory target for reducing electricity used at, used at peak hours in order to flatten the curve. So these things, uh, okay, let him just talk. The EU president So we need to flatten the curve on energy. So they're still using the COVID language. Next. Shutting down the whole economy is the only way of limiting global warming to, to, to following the UN Paris Agreement. They said this in 2013, the top UN climate official. Shutting down the whole economy. How prescient. How did he know seven years before? Go. Here's where it gets really creepy. November 2019, the UN demanded a 7% annual cut in carbon dioxide just six months before COVID lockdowns began. 2019, November, we need 7% cut. Actual headlines. Next. Presto, by December 2020, the UN got exactly what it called for. Actual headline, emissions fall 7% because of COVID lockdowns. They call for it, they ask for it, it happened, they got it. Next. And now what do they want? Oh my gosh, now they demand lockdown-like emissions. This is actual headline, UK Guardian. Co global lockdown every two years to meet Paris climate goals. That's a study. This is what's happening in academia, our peer-reviewed journals, and our corporate media. This is it. We need it every two years. At least they're not saying every year. They're giving you a year reprieve of lockdown. Next. covid could COVID lockdown have helped save the planet? This is corporate media all excited how great the lockdowns were. Nature returned. The skies were clear. It's just all about this nonsense. And meanwhile, there's two things. Our emissions as, as, as humans dropped that 7%, but in the atmosphere, didn't notice one bit. There was no change in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere at all, which is a separate issue. Go ahead. Next. Net zero. This is the goals of Europe. This is what's happening throughout the U.S. Europe is like a lockdown, but it's kind of permanent. It doesn't end because there's no way you could ever solve the climate crisis. It's an endless crisis. Next. Let me speed up right here. This is the Gates Soros funded professor, Mariana Mazzucato. Look at what she proposed in September of 2020. She used the phrase lockdown. Under a climate lockdown, governments would limit private vehicle use, ban consumption of red meat, impose extreme energy saving measures. Fossil fuel companies have to stop drilling. We must overhaul economic structures, do capitalism differently. Pretty much. Now, one thing I want you to consider is how come all these intellectuals are coming to the same conclusion? Is it that 
they all have the same type of mind and they're coming to the same conclusion because it's so obvious that we should tell human beings to stop eating meat. That's the way to save the world. Or is it that they're all being given a script? Every one of those is happening right now. That's why I say the Great Reset isn't theoretical. We're living through it. They're imposing it right now. Next. I don't want you to be hopeful. I want you to panic. Why? Because when you panic, you can't make rational, calm, thought-out decisions with a normal democratic being. You just have to have emergency powers and do something because you're panicking. And then she's saying this at the World Economic Forum. Next. Senator Schumer urging Biden to declare a national climate emergency. Next. Senate, uh, uh, AOC and other senators pushing Biden to declare an emergency. We're out of time. Next. And Biden's getting the message. Scientific American, we're living in a climate emergency. We're going to say so. Next. This is Klaus Schwab, World Economic Forum. One of the greatest lessons of the past five centuries is this acute crisis crises contribute to the boosting of the power of state. It's always been the case. There's no reason why it should be different with COVID-19. So there you go. They know what it means, emergency power. They know it boosts state power. So here's what we got next. Joe Biden is about to declare this. U.S. to extend public health emergency. This is recent. Go back one. Uh, go back to go, go, go back to yeah, right here. Biden said to declare this was from July of this year. He decided to wait till after the midterms. This is Washington Post Associated Press reporting this. Next. It's going to give Biden 130 different new wartime-like powers, but not just that. Governor Newsom will get additional powers. Every mayor will get additional powers. They'll be able to do things like ban cars from cities, more regulations, more thermostat controls, like we're seeing uh, in Colorado, where the state, the utility overrode the people in the program and said, you know, energy emergency, you can't use it. Next. Time Magazine is all in. The pandemic remade every corner of society. Now it's climate's turn. They're saying it like it's a great thing. So next. Marxism's new face is what I'm calling. This is a UK, the university elites. Study claims Americans cut energy use 90%, live 640 square feet, fly once every three years. This is what would happen under a climate emergency. Limit new clothing, plant-based diets, collective transport, universal basic income, and degrowth. I, I've debated these people at UN Climate Summit. They believe in planned recessions to fight global warming and economic degrowth. Well, what's a lockdown except a public health planned recession? Next. International arrivals down 78% in 2020. They probably have flights. They, they love that. That's what climate activists are looking for. That's next. That is a public transportation, which means they work not to control the virus, but to control you. The lockdowns actually worked for that, but not viruses. Next. So MasterCard and the United Nations are teaming up, and they're coming up with a card that just started last year that monitors your carbon footprint. World Economic Forum loves this. They were praising it, saying, when you hit your carbon max, your ability to spend money cuts off, just like the uh, digital currency we talked about. This is voluntary. Don't worry. It's completely voluntary. Until it's not. Until the rest of the corporate America. There's another card out, too, doing the same exact thing, monitoring your, your carbon footprint. Next. International Energy Agency in 2021, net zero, behavioral changes to fight climate. Listen to what they actually wrote. A shift away from private car use, upper speed limits, thermostat controls, limits on your hot water. So they're setting us up for a permanent energy-style climate lockdown. Next. This is UK funded for absolute zero. Stop flying, no new roads, airport closures, stop eating beef, stop doing anything that causes emissions. The next one is chilling. Regulate carbon dioxide similar to asbestos. These are all pulled directly from the report. So human breath is now going to be, again, we exhale carbon dioxide, regulated like asbestos. Next. Your CO2 breath is killing people. Three Americans create enough carbon dioxide to kill one person. Every 4,400 metric tons of CO2 produced globally will someone... See, the, your CO2 laden breath is killing people. Science, science says so. So now science is the stooge and in service of the elite. Just like when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, when the magician said to Fir'aun that, okay, wa, wa inna lana ajar, will there be a reward for us? It, in kunna if we were, if we were to be if we're if we're successful and this is what's happening is that all of academia all of the think tanks they're not independent anymore this is not like scientists in the time of newton or in the time of einstein where they had their independent now scientists work for companies they work for institutions they're given grants and they have to prove that they're worthy of those grants and those people pay the money who feel like they're doing things according to their agenda and this is well understood now in the in the academic world that you can't just do your own whatever uh type of studies that you want to do will die so they're weaponizing our breath so by, remember, you know, you're sitting here breathing out carbon dioxide you're killing people in africa right now that's this is in peer-reviewed studies you can't you can't argue with science this is science next journal nature covid lockdowns are key to begin personal carbon allowances restrictions on individuals that were unthinkable only a year have now prepared to accept tracking and limitations to achieve a safer climate the most premier scientific journal these are not i'm not citing you know greenpeace blogs these are the mainstream scientific journals of our day next Climate lockdowns. British medical journey calls for meat dairy hikes to fight climate change. Meat consumption in North America must fall 79%. They didn't get 80, so we're not quite at 80, but only 79. Substantially fewer journeys by car. British medical journal, not the World Wildlife Fund or, or Friends of the Earth. 
British Medical Journal. Next. 230 medical journals are most prestigious. Earth's climate lockdown. Greatest threat to public health is climate change. Declare COVID-19 response to be template for a climate response. Do you see where this is headed? I'll spell it out. Here we go. Next. <laughs> Anthony Fauci, and this is September or August of 2020. COVID-19 is due to extreme backlashes from nature. He wrote this in the journal Cell. A scientific journal, Cell, a jerk peer review journal. It will require changes in human behavior, radical changes, rebuilding infrastructure of human existence. No one really made attention to this, but Anthony Fauci did this, uh, did this uh, paper in a Cell Biology journal. This is frightening stuff. Next. You'll own nothing and you'll be happy. This reminds you, that's the slogan. Next, the World Economic Forum. China's buying up American farms. <clears throat> <clears throat> the current trend is leading toward the creation of a Chinese-owned agricultural land monopoly. This is reported in Politico, by the way. Again, this isn't, I'm not citing some obscure blog or anything like that. we got, got good news. Everyone likes competition. We were talking about breaking up big tech. China has competition. We don't have to worry about the Chinese land monopoly. Next. Because Bill Gates has beat China. Yeah, yeah, yeah. homegrown American. No one's applauding. All right. Uh, Young, NBC News reported in 2021 that Bill Gates is now America's largest single farmland owner. Young farmers are going up against billionaire investors. Who can compete with someone like Bill Gates? Farmland's being gobbled up by the investor class. Equity asset firms. Next. NBC News reported Bill Gates is not the one in the overalls. Imagine that. He's not on the one in the tractor. He's the landlord there. Next. What is his agenda? He wants synthetic beef. He wants the rich nations, i.e. the United States. So as America's single largest farmland owner, he'll have a lot of sway in how farmland is used and help his own business. Hey, he likes Monopoly, so he's going to be pushing this synthetic beef. Again, I believe his thing, he's, he's got his foot in both, but he's doing that synthetic beef where they get the stem cells and they grow it in a it's lab. It's true. Uh, Bill Gates loves Monopolies. He had Monopoly in the software industry with Microsoft. He then got his Monopoly in the COVID scheme with, uh, with his Moderna, right? Not much competition three out of maybe i mean one out of four maybe maximum and uh, now he wants a uh, monopoly in the agricultural industry and there are clear ayahs of quran that tell us that where that will be leading uh, control of agriculture is the future control of future is the future and uh, it really ties into the everything if you want to understand how everything ties into the center of it is going to be agriculture and it sort of comes out like a mutant blob that should be that's actually a living i don't know what you call it but then other people are pushing next i'll show you what, the other, what else is happening here well first of all the same thing on land 60 billion dollar housing grab by wall street as lockdowns economic calamity that you know this equity asset firms gobbling up property next all party yellow nothing 20 billion between them the equity asset firms almost uh, own almost everything by 2028 they're just looking at the trajectory of this it's gobbling up stuff so go ahead Owning something creates social injustice. This is the United Nations uh, had a human settlement. It was called the Vancouver Declaration. Now you know why they want you to own nothing because it creates uh, private ownership is a principal instrument of wealth concentration and contributes to social injustice. Public control of land is indispensable. This is according to UN Declaration. So next, let's go through. We will own everything and we will be happy. That's actually a more accurate slogan there. So. Uh, Sri Lanka followed these agricultural paths that they're doing. That was a Sri Lankan prime minister a few years ago. Uh, we'll make my country rich by 2025. Of course, the country collapsed. The palace was overrun. People were, ran and swam in the swimming pool. A true insurrection. And the World Economic Forum removed that article for some reason. So, go ahead. Next. Farmers are being bankrupted by top-down edicts. Russell Brand, um, he, he believes this was the intention. Uh, you'll see what's happening. They're bankrupting all these practices. And the, the, the result is it bankrupts farmers, allowing centralized agricultural interests to acquire land cheaply. Next. Stalin and Mao seize land. Climate communism. Another new phrase. You might want to remember climate communism or climate Marxism. Next. World Economic Forum encouraging people to drink reclaimed sewage, eating weeds. Bill Gates has a picture of him drinking water made from sewage treatment water. Uh, it's just the idea that they, they don't want you spoiling our environment. We'll use everything from labs and recreate. Next. Great Reset World Economic Forum promoting fake meat from a printer. Machines can print up to six kilograms of meat an hour. You put in the vegetable oil goo and it comes out the fiber, you know, the texture. Of, you know, they're going to have it perfected. Hey, what's for dinner tonight? I'm printing it now. <laughs> World Economic Forum. They really are pushing insect eating. Yeah, we might want you to eat insects soon. Next. Yeah. Drink up. Cockroach milk is a protein drink you didn't know you've been missing. Next. Uh, how to, this is all stuff. This is all mainstream media. Scientific American. How to develop an appetite for insects. Uh, time to eat insects. You should probably, you will be eating bugs. And not, this isn't just some minor thing. They're pushing insects to replace the meat that they're going to destroy. Next. Eating insects could reduce climate change. Look at the World Economic Forum. Just search after, it's just everywhere you look. It's about insects and lab-grown meat. They really want you not eating meat. Next. Of course, they have, would you have beer made from urine? Water shortages. Uh, you know, Surat Al-Baqarah. Surat Al-Baqarah. Um, I wonder if we look into this, if there is a correlation between what's happening and the name of the surah and uh, at many, many different levels, right? So you have the red heifer that they want to use for the temple and then also what Bill Gates is trying to do um, 
They say they can create some water shortages next. Your pee is now, remember, they weaponized our breath. As, as they want to regulate it like asbestos. Well, now they want your pee as a pollutant problem. It's causing problems. It's causing global warming. You're eating too much meat, which is creating nitrous oxide, which is contributing to warming. The scientific American. Next. If people make a declaration in the climate uh, lockdown. You can't fly commercial unless it's morally justifiable. Next. This is, this is Babylon B, not a real headline, but couldn't that be a real headline? <laughs> State with no electricity or whose drivers are run. This is incredible. You had that, you had the fleece on doing a Jedi mind trick, trying to trick your body when you're hot to, that, you, that, you, that you're not actually hot. World Bank is trying to stop funding of, of gas-powered cars at the automaker level next. In Australia, banks are not going to give you a car loan if you buy an electric car, a gas-powered car. Next. So they're creating car shortages. There you see Cuba on the left. That's the East German Trabant on the right. People had to wait years for that East German car. California is going to have only one approved car, and you're looking at waiting lists because there's no way they can get the rare earth mining to make electric cars the only car you can sell by 2035. Next. So they won't save us. We need to get rid of cars completely. But you knew that. It had nothing to do with actual gas-powered cars. They don't want you to own a car. Next. Owning a car is outdated 20th century thinking. So says the UK transportation minister. Next. Housing pose more danger than vehicles. So you can see where they're coming with houses. Next. UCLA professor rethink home ownership. I'm not making this up. UCLA. Again, not a Greenpeace blog. This is happening now. Go next. What's happening to your kids? Is having a baby pure environmental vandalism? How many here have had engaged in pure environmental vandalism? No. Yeah. All right. Vandals next. Having a baby is pure environmental vandalism. Wrap this up here. Oh, climate change. Uh, BC doctor clinically diagnosed patient as suffering from climate change. First case, had a heat stroke. This is now happening. Head of the emergency room department. But it's okay because if you get diagnosed with it, look what happens next. You can die with Oh, he, he says wrote the word climate change next. But then you can die. It could be on your death certificate. There's a whole move. This was actually in a peer-reviewed journal, Australian University. Climate is a killer. We have to put it on death certificates. So next. Global warming is a bigger threat than the coronavirus. Next. So the Harvard School is now linking COVID and climate. Root causes also increase. We need to make climate action to prevent the next pandemic. So if you don't support the Green New Deal or UN climate, you're a grandma killer. Next. This is all the media jumping all over this. New study in nature. Climate more pandemic likely. So they're combining COVID and climate at the highest levels. Major peer review journal, Harvard University, corporate media. They want you to talk about the issues synonymously. Next. We created the pandemic scene. Climate could be worse. Next. Kids will get sick. You'll make children vulnerable. Next. That's what you're going to be seeing on CNN is climate change death tolls replacing the previous COVID death tolls. So next. So that's the reality. 99% drop in climate death since 1920. Next. So now they want to have a pandemic treaty. I write about this in the book. This is what you should be afraid of. Gates-funded scientists declare a pandemic, and they can shut the world down. Ban travel, vaccine ports, passports, interstate travel, you name it. That is scary. You won't have your Swedens or your Floridas. They're going to try to have total control. Next. So speechless climate change is the cause of that. If you're speechless after all this, climate change is accelerating language loss. True story. These are all real headlines. Next. This is today's story. Angry climate change is also the cause. No joke. Bloomberg's reporting, peer review journal, climate change is making people angrier online. Go ahead, next. So it's making us angrier, a lot angrier. Hateful comments spike. You'll have hateful behavior. Uh, the first thing to do is limit global warming. It's the most obvious approach to solving online anger. I bet you didn't know this. You always learn something new. Next. But in 1941, they said that more warming led to people being more docile. So that's why we had the rise of Hitler and Mussolini. So I'm a little confused. There's got some conflicting science there. Next. So in conclusion, keep calm. Trust the experts. Next. Next. Don't go down the rabbit hole of misinformation. New York Times article, critical thinking, leads to misinformation. Next. You must not do your own research when it comes to science. Just accept the experts. This is the, hey, this is the, the media's telling us next. Questioning authority has become too much of a good thing. It's killing people. Next. It's time to give up on facts, says Slate Magazine, and lay them down in favor of a more useful weapon, emotions. So just, just two weeks to flatten the facts. Next. Uh, okay. So uh, we're going to do uh, a little bit of uh, the question answer session in a second. But uh, I think... It's very, very important for our ulama, for our scholars, for our imams, for our da'is to be aware that whether this agenda happens or doesn't happen, even though, like I said, anyone aware of the sayings of the Prophet wasallam will understand that this is going to happen at some level. Anyone who reads the ayah of the Qur'an, يَمْحَكُ riba wa yurbis sadaqat, that Allah destroys the interest-based system. And Allah increases the sadaqa, volunteer sadaqa-based system, that this system is going to fall. Uh, anyone <coughs> who studies what the UN is planning will understand that uh, this is something of concern, something the ulama should talk about, something the ulama should investigate, something the imams should talk about and investigate and be aware of and most importantly the Muslims in general need to become aware of this and know what they will do if this does happen after all it is not a small project it is the main agenda of the United Nations it is the main thrust of all the political elite all the global elite everyone from Prince Charles to uh, uh, Bill Gates, right? 
they're all in on this. So it's going to affect your future. So what are you going to do? Are you going to think of doing hijrah, going to a city where you can raise your own food, where you can have your own meat, where you can have your own lifestyle according to the teachings of Islam? Or are you going to compromise yourself and live in the city life where you're going to become eventually unhealthy? Okay, so now let me share with you uh, one more thing. Russia working together uh, with the World Economic Forum? Good question. Putin seemed to be much closer back in the 90s. Putin is a, it's an interesting question because Putin doesn't follow the climate agenda. Putin doesn't really, uh, he doesn't seem to follow a lot of the woke agenda, anything like that. But what's interesting is since the war in Ukraine, China and Russia has now aligned itself much more closely. We've sort of forced it because of our sanctions to, with closer ties to China, which is a bad thing. Uh, but I would say that, no, I would say that Russia at this point is acting gun rogue. They're not really following the World Economic Forum and the United Nations at all. They're building up their energy. Same thing with China. I mean, China is doing everything they can to, in, to increase their economy and fossil fuel use. So both China and Russia are rogue regimes, according to the world economic, although they love China. China says all the right things and China does it. But in terms of China's actions, they're not following it. Now, the next one is very important for Muslims in the United States of America, how the IRS is going to try to get your money. Now, watch. Could you uh, comment on whether you think the 87,000 new IRS employees that we're going to hire fit into this Great Reset? Yeah, I think this the, the 87,000, this is unprecedented. You know, it's uh, the biggest expansion, I think, in our lifetimes of anything but, uh, on this level. It can only be to hassle people, to, to ensure this agenda. And this is something, hopefully we can prevent this or reverse it. But yeah, this is, this is going to be weaponizing tax audits. We saw this when Obama was president. All the conservative groups got hit with this. The, the thing about the left and progressives like that and people, globalists, they just look at the government as their tool to do anything they want, and they can justify it any way they want, and it takes years to stop them. I, one of the examples I gave is how long it took to stop the mask mandate on airlines and trains and buses. It took two years for one Trump-appointed judge to put an end to that, but they got two years out of a completely uh, not, uh, illegal order to do that. So... I, who knows what the IRS is going to be able to do, but be afraid, be very afraid, because the IRS is you know, the one agency you don't want to have that kind of power, but that's coming. Okay, a couple of questions about the monetary system. How is the Great Reset supposed to affect our uh, monetary system uh, if this goes the way that it, uh, Klaus Schwab would like it to? And what would it mean if uh, the world did not use the dollar as a petrodollar? Yeah, that address that in the book as well. Yeah, the, that's the, the petrodollar is the, the standard dollar, the standard for the world to use to buy oil. It's what keeps the dollar strong. Ron Paul and others are worried that if this you know, goes over to China or, or a European system, that that would collapse our currency. Uh, one of the things they're doing in addition to that, the great, the great reset is one is modern monetary theory, where the idea is not just deficit spending, but massive deficit spending, where you bankrupt the country, cripple it, and you basically don't need to pass spending bills anymore because you can just sort of find the money uh, by printing more money. Uh, and so they want that economic collapse and chaos because then it just requires more regulations, more government intervention, more guaranteed income, more dependence. Any kind of chaos is good at this point. And it's also everything I just said from collapsing all the systems. They're looking to nationalize energy, nas just like in 1932 I showed you the book, nationalize energy, nationalize food, nationalize transportation because they'll say the markets have failed. It won't be this government totally nationalizing it, but it'll be a corporate government collusion, a hybrid this time. Okay. A couple of questions, Mark, on, um, I guess, this is always uh, sort of marketed a la Elizabeth Warren as the working yeah. the working man's fight against the rich, right? And so from a practical perspective, perspective, isn't this the greatest transfer of wealth from the middle class to the wealthy in the history of the world? And I'm going to dovetail it with this question quote is the great reset supposed to com if it's supposed to combat white supremacy and foster social justice why is the world economic forum run by a quote 
a bunch of old, rich, white dudes? <laughs> That's a great question. Well, it's the same thing. If climate change means we can't travel or fly commercial planes, why are the people demanding it up in private jets, living in seaside mansions? There's always that hypocrisy. You're absolutely right. I mean, there's no, And even the environmental movement. The environmental movement uh, has gone full identity politics, but... Yeah, they've even gone. They're, they're now accusing Leonardo DiCaprio of being a white savior complex for his environmental films. Uh, and they're a very white, uh, wealthy sort of upper middle class movement. But it's, that we find that all over the place. It's the the activists. They're imposing this ideology, but yet they themselves don't follow it, don't represent it, and they won't have anything to do with it in their personal lives. When Bill Gates was pushing the lockdowns longer, he was the same week he was doing this in January of 2021, 20, he literally was bidding on the world's largest private jet transport company uh, for he and pals at Davos and all that to fly. And they have no intention of being affected by any of these restrict regulations that they impose. Okay, let's talk about ESG for a minute. There's always sure. interest in ESG. We so in this uh, fall of the cities, global cities, as the prophet has mentioned, in one narration up to like, I think, more than 10 cities falling, for more than 10 countries falling, right? So when this final thing happens, now, I want to mention this narration of the prophet. The prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the last of the towns of Islam to become ruined will be Medina. Okay, and this ha this has been uh, by Imam Tirmizi. He says has a hadithun hasanun ghalibun. This hadith is sound. And the Prophet, آخر القرية من قرو الإسلام, the last of the cities of Islam, خراباً that will be ruined, will be Al Madina, meaning before Medina, Islamabad, and Mecca, and Kuala Lumpur. And uh, is, is, is Istanbul or, or uh, you know, Kustantunia, these cities will fall before Medina falls. Uh, the cities of Islam will fall. Now, how, why will that happen? Well, if you follow this agenda, this is shaitan giving them the carrot, right? So follow my breadcrumbs and I will lead you to a utopian world. But... This utopian world is not a utopian world. This world will bring everyone down so that the one who is, who shaitan wants to give him power will in the end have power. These people who are all seeking power are following an illusion and it will be their, their downfall. They will do all the hard work to create that system and then in the end they will all fall and then the vacuum will be picked up by the Antichrist, by the Jad. So yes, we are living in those times. And anyone who studies the narrations of the Prophet ﷺ will be very clear about that, very evidently clear that the world is in its last hours. There's absolutely no doubt about that. The Prophet said ﷺ that when there are buildings over Mecca that are taller than its mountains, then the hour has shattered casted its shadow and like i said isn't it strange that it is the clock tower the sa'a the out you know the clock the out the time of the day of judgment is called sa'a the hour and what is a clock called in arabic sa'a so the the shadow of the sa'a the shadow of the hour is literally over the kaaba literally over the kaaba so we definitely live in the end times it means that we must now, in the last stretch of this time, we must do something to make Allah happy and His Messenger happy. The Prophet was so worried about the people in end times, so now we have to try ten times harder than we even want to make the end times the result of the end times, bring a smile to the Prophet's face, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We must rise up to the challenge and to rise up to the challenge the first thing we have to know is that what is going on the prophet was very aware of what was going on in his time this is why he made such a successful hijrah from mecca to medina he knew where to send his companions in ethiopia he knew 
uh, even the types of sheep different tribes had. He would say, such and such tribe, their sheep are like this. I mean, the Prophet was very politically aware. He knew how to uh, negotiate contracts, make treaties. He goes to Medina and like as if he's been a statesman all his life, he goes to Medina and gets a federation established with Mithaqul Medina. So anyway, uh, it, please do share this with others. Please read the comment section. Please uh, do contribute. Uh, in this month of Ramadan, if Allah puts it in your heart, أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولساء المسلمين والمسلمات السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته